Nick could make a very critical error. I need him to make that error. What is it? What's the error? Are you gonna tell me? In battle, you may find yourself faced with great adversity and the odds against you. There are those that revel in the challenge as an opportunity to learn, to grow, and to rise to the occasion despite the odds. In this episode of 40K in 40 Minutes, we shall see if the Ultramarines can best the supposed superior codex with the Tau. Hey folks, this is Nick here and I am back to play my Tau and I'm very excited. I love my Tau and they have been given so many tools in this edition and they are really strong. So strong I feel a little guilty. Just letting all of our viewers know that this game was filmed before some of the balance updates. So you're uh, the latest challenger to come up against what is a really strong codex this edition. Tau still are at the height of the game right now and uh, the Ultramarines haven't got an update in a while. When you hear that there's a boogeyman and it's, it's a codex and the Tau have a ridiculous win rate and the Space Marines don't have a chance, when you hear all these things, I don't know, you can't help but give it a go yourself. So this is all space and you can't really go into the, the space area unless you have the fly keyword, which unfortunately a lot of my stuff does. We're all and only one of my units has fly. <laughs> So there might be a slight advantage there, but we tried to give you a lot of line of sight blocking. We tried to make this as fair as we can here. As well, um, we're saying that if you're within, if any of the platforms are within an inch of each other, you can just hop that. We've got some uh, line of sight blocking explosions here, there, and there. We're also counting these buildings as obscuring and the orca there as obscuring so they can't be seen through. In this 2000 point game, we play a modified version of the mission Abandoned Sanctuaries, but because of our custom battlefield, we will not be using the mission special rule, No Man's Land. Me and Tack have had a back and forth rivalry going for a while. Uh, I feel always, I always feel on the back foot when I play against him because he is very good at this game. And I often, I get impetuous, I get, I get excited, and then I make mistakes. And I'm hoping I don't do that this game. I really like the Ultramarines because they are a Swiss Army Knife. They've got something for everything. They're not fantastic, great, oppressive in any phase and or ability, but they always have a trick. Today I'm bringing a Borkan list. I tried Tau Sept last time, I'm bringing Borkan Sept this time. Borkan has some really cool abilities, it gives you longer range on the guns, and all the battle suits and vehicles get wounded at minus one strength if it's a strength seven or less weapon. Really strong. Attacker defender, let's see what happens. I will let you deploy first. Reserves and transfers for myself. I have my unit of crisis suits I'm gonna put in reserves. I'm also going to put my red breachers in my red devilfish and my blue breachers in my blue devilfish. It makes it nice and easy. Inceptors will be in deep strike All reserve. Right. This list in particular has a lot of infiltrators, which allows a lot of forward deploy. I know you have stealth suits, and I know that they want to be in my face early, and I know that they also have that beacon that allows you to deep strike onto them. I'm going to just try to block your ability to immediately get on that objective. So my stealth suits, we're going to be all like, super sneaky, eh? I'm surprised you actually gave me first deploy. I probably shouldn't have let Tack have first dibs because now he's taking the center and I can't stop him. This mission objective is all about taking the center objectives. Put my stealth suits, because you're right, I should have done that first. I'm gonna put them behind this building over here. That is a smart move, because what that does is it limits my infiltrators for deploying on this side. So that is a relic war one Scorpius. I'm gonna go with my flyer next. So Targaris is gonna go right there. He's feeling brave, he's protected by bodyguards. So they'll be right on this objective and charging anything that may appear on that side. One of the factors that makes Tau incredibly powerful is its pregame move and its ability to kind of go wherever it wants to maximize output and maximize the damage it can do. If I can use the infiltrators to kind of shut down that movement, if I go first and kind of lock up a lot of his units, I have a chance. 
And the way that the ultramarines function, if I don't go first, I'm still able to use my Warlord trait, which is Lord of Deceit, as well as the uh, redeployed stratagem to pull my units back if I have to and hide them so that I'm not completely obliterated first turn. And you've also made the mistake of deploying it right on the line. I am going to deploy these guys so that they can charge it first turn. If I go first. Ah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Put a piranha way back here. So the rapid fire guns are 30 inch range. Cover that objective pretty quickly. And I can do it from the safety of behind this thing. Here's another thing with your stealth suits. You can deploy your crises within three inches of uh, them, right? Of the homing beacon that I put down. Infiltrator rule supersedes all of that. So you've got a, I've got a 12 inch deny right there. I feel like you're already setting yourself up really well for success here. Only if I go first. I think some ouch puppies need to go down. Ouch puppies? Ouch puppies. Also known as Crewtowns. Now, this might look like Anchi, but it's not Anchi. <laughs> Here he comes, Gilliman himself. And he walks eight, so he might as well go right there. Give me something good. Give me something, I'm not giving you anything good. Another Devilfish down. And I think I'm gonna put it on this side of the table here. This is one of the most engaging deployment phases I've ever had. It's so back and forth and it's like sets up so many things. This is gonna be awesome. All right, well to keep your forward deploying vehicles over there honest, I'm gonna put a squad of eradicators here with Meltas. So you can come <laughs> into my effective range if you want to. And that's it. That's all you got, eh? Kadra Fireblade, mm -hmm. he's gonna go in here with these guys. Commander Chasso Kikasso. With, with the new shiny honor gauntlet. And the thermo-pneumatic projector that allows him to just kill anything he touches. It's amazing. Chasso Kikasso is gonna support from the rear for this for now. My hammerhead right here. I feel like I'm running out of places to put things. And I think I'm gonna put the sniper drones over here. All right, that is deployment. And this is gonna be crazy. You think so? Yeah, I think it really is. And first turn is gonna matter a whole lot. All right, well, here we go. I got a six. I got a two. I guess I'm forced to go first. And now it comes down to this interesting pre-game movement that I get to do and the possible redeploy that TAC gets to do. This could really change the entire deployment of this game. Now I'm gonna use the Warlord trait, Lord of Deceit. I'm going to pull two of my infiltrators and put them back into reserves. I'm gonna to need to use one of these infiltrators to block out Nick's ability to drop his crisis suits. Because I don't have anything for the first turn to shoot at, and I think the second turn I'm still gonna have very little to shoot at, this is gonna be a later turn game. And this is gonna be so much about movement until you're in the perfect place. The patient hunter, I think, is the strategy to play for this. So I am going to do Kayun. So, Kayun ability, these Devilfishes uh, go into strategic reserves, they're coming off the battlefield and they will come in in a future turn. Then I'm spending the 2CP for rapid redeployment, which allows me to redeploy up to three units. We are going to see the board change drastically here as both players continue to vie for position and gain every advantage that they can possibly get. So this Eradicator squad moving back here. Crew move forward to take that center. Tack needs to hide his eradicators. Crute hounds also move forward. These pathfinders have zero shots to do with their marker lights. So they might as well just sit back here and hold the objective. If they sit back there to hold that objective, they'll never get any shots. Yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> so yeah, okay, their pregame move is to move up. So they're gonna move up. Try to go somewhere where their ability to deny deep strike comes into play. By doing that, I successfully made it so that I won't be able to put my crisis suits down here and pile some shots into there. Getting to the center of the map will be key for both players with lots of points available there. For secondaries, Nick took engage in all fronts to the last and retrieve Nachmund data. To the last is actually a really interesting pick as the units he must now keep alive are the ones that he tends to use more aggressively. Tack chose Oaths of Moment, bring it down, and retrieve Nachman data. It will be imperative that Tack takes and keeps that center island. I've got first turn, but I'm feeling very kind of like, yeah. There's a unit to kill now. So I am up to 12 command points. Then I do the invocation of the elements 
and my ethereal is going to try to give me another command point on a two up. And I get it. So I'm at 13 command points. Beginning of the movement phase, I do need to, to declare my marker lights. So that's marker drones here, marker drones here. The uh, the flyer has a marker light on it. The, uh, the, the sky ray has marker lights on it, so they will declare marker light action as well. So all those things are doing marker lights. So the puppies are gonna go up, take that objective. Move my commander, it's, he's gonna advance. Pathfinders are gonna move up. I'm gonna move up my stealth suits. I just got no shots with him. It's very disappointing. I wanna shoot things, Tack. Why are you doing this to me? I'm giving you all the objectives instead. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna move up these broadsides. Let's do some shooting. So first of all, marker lights. I have one marker light from this right here. It completes the action right now, and I'm gonna shoot that marker light into, so the eradicator's back there. I fail. Marker lights from the sky ray. Two marker lights from him. Got them both, so I have four marker lights. Way more than I need on those infiltrators. Okay. With the broadsides into your infiltrators over there. Blowing one command point, bringing me down to 10 for smoke screen. So you're minus one to hit. The broadsides will use one of those marker light tokens to increase their bliss skill by one. So I go back to fours. <laughs> Big giant rail gun first. I hit you none. The smart missile systems. Four hits. So I need four ups. I fail one, blows the helix gauntlet. All of the sky ray shots are also going into it as well. The missile rack is D3 plus one. And it's also using a marker light as well and it hits you once. I can reroll one to hit roll uh, with his uh, targeting acquired ability. Sure. And I got two hits, doing poorly here. Two wounds at strength, nine at minus three. Here's some sixes, maybe. Nope. Nope. Don't even add to six. So two guys are dead, I don't even need to roll for damage. And then it has its smart missile systems as well. Only one wound. So. Nope, take one wound. I got one shot with my plasma weapon. Uh, hitting on threes. Hitting on threes. It missed. Uh, it does not wound though, but I reroll all failed wound rolls. It wounds. Six up. Yep, oh, I'm good. Oh, come on! The piranha is gonna try to shoot into eradicators over there from a fusion blaster. And I wound at minus four. I don't get a save. Excellent. So D6 damage, six damage. Okay. I think I killed one of those eradicators. And then he's also got his drones that are firing as well. One wound, no minus. I uh, still take it. I did a damage. You did. Sun Shark is now gonna fire everything into the Eradicators. Now the Tau Flyers haven't been really showing up in a lot of the uh, tournament lists because they're on the weaker side in the Tau Codex. So I'm not expecting a lot from them here. First of all, let's do the missile pod. Four shots, hitting on fives, strength seven. That's one wound at minus two. Nope. It does two damage. Okay, so it kills the one. Okay, I'm gonna overcharge those two uh, those two drones firing their ion rifles. What's the profile of this gun? Okay, so it's an ion rifle, and each drone has two of them. Okay. And it's a three-shot weapon, okay. overcharging, strength eight, okay. minus two, two damage. Tower of fine, guys. <laughs> um, you're minus one hit, so I only hit you uh, four times, however, I rolled a one, two ones. So you're wounding on threes, not twos. Oh, I only wounded you twice! I'm gonna command point reroll one of these. Five ups. Five ups. Let's see it. Uh, so I'm burning the command point. I'm going down to nine command points on a command reroll to see if I get a five. Nope. Ah, Close. Got him. I think people are maybe sleeping on these flyers. So Nick told me that the flyer is like one of the worst things in the codex. It just wiped out some eradicators. I don't know what worst means. I've taken two wounds off the bomber because of the mortal wounds he blew, blew himself up with, so he's got 10 wounds remaining. All right, that was all the shots I had. Okay. I didn't do enough. I score for engaging all fronts. I've got all four quarters. I also have this center objective, which is gonna give me two points for the mission-specific primary. Lastly, we gotta see if these stealth suits retrieved knock mandata. So three, two, or one. So I need to roll a three, two, or one to see if they do it. Here we go, it's a risk. I did it! Did it. 
end of Tau, turn one. Nick is off to a good start with five points, though Tau could even the score a little bit with his secondary choices if things go well. I've lost one of my eradicator units. This is tough. This is a game about points. Those objectives are right in front of me. I can still go out and get them. I'm gonna have to do that. In my command phase, I gain one command point, so that takes me up to 10. So they're gonna go for the center. So they're just gonna move there. This unit is retrieving Nakmandata. Moving to the psychic phase. What do I want to do? First thing I'll do is try to smite the bomber. 10 becomes 11 because Tigeris is plus one. D6 mortal wounds on this plane? Five. All right, down to five wounds on that plane. All right. Might of Heroes, the Blade Guard vet veteran. All right, Might of Heroes on the Blade Guard vets. It goes off, excellent. Scorpius is now going to fire. It's going to go into the broadsides. 3 d 3 let's see what happens. Hitting on threes. I wound once. I will take it onto one of the drones. On a six, he saves himself. He does save himself. <laughs> the hill blasters are gonna go into uh, the crew tier. Do need to burn a command point though. On They're going to shoot and perform an action. So winning on twos. So I have four dead dudes. So I'm actually gonna take off from here in the hopes of making your charge just a little bit longer. Gilliman will fire into the plane. Miss once. However, I still get to reroll once to myself because it affects characters. So I'm winning on fives. Uh, nothing. Whoa! Okay, I didn't expect that to happen. The squad here into the coot. I uh, failed, so one more guy dies. Okay. So eradicators are going to go into the um, broadsides. They have to take out one of his big guns. Nothing. What the heck was that? In a game where everything needs to go my way, this is not going my way. Oh. It happens. Dice didn't want you to wound them at all. No. So the only thing I have left is uh, to charge the blade guard. A lot is riding on this charge. They need to be in the center to score my Osa moment. They need to be on the center to get that objective. And if I can kill enough and or all of uh, what's on there, I either get more points or I can wrap up his crew and stay safe from his guns. You get an eight with two dice and a potential reroll. Nope. Six. Come on, you gotta reroll that. Here we go. Oh, 10, all right. Oh, there we go, come on in. It is four attacks for the sergeant, three attacks for each of the ones. I do trigger Angels of Death, so I get an extra dice each. I did get Might of Heroes off on the sergeant, yeah, so he has one extra attack, so there's six attacks. The yeah, luck has been really poor with you lately for it this has. turn, yeah, so yeah. let's see if it continues, but I really think you're just gonna wipe that squad. But do I, do I burn the command point and make him uh, reroll once? Moving is shaking his head, so Moving's in the studio helping us out. He's shaking his head, he thinks I should just naturally roll, I so I'm gonna naturally be roll. Fine. Uh, I rolled two ones in there, moving. <laughs> <laughs> Twos with this one. I missed one. Two of them dead. And then here's the rest of them. <laughs> and then these are gonna be winning on threes. Uh, only three. Only three? Three guys? So Nick's gonna score some points here because the crew are obsec and they hold that center. But at least the big guard is safe. I'm gonna wrap up the crew so they can't escape and that means the big guns aren't shooting into the big guard. I actually get six attacks with those three guys. I hit you five times. Considerably better than what you did to me. Fours. I fail once. Fail one of them. Uh, he's not dead though. No, he's not. I'm gonna do a morale test on these crew. I don't wanna risk them running away because I currently hold that objective, so I'm gonna spend two command points to insane bravery them and make them so they auto pass. That's the end of turn one. Yeah. I do get two points there for us a moment because I am within six inches of the center. Knock my data back there. Tau have a slight lead after turn one and there is a lot of game left for those Ultramarines to score. So let's see what happens. All of TAC's stuff is now in the open. It's a perfect opportunity. I'm gonna get to use my rail guns. I'm gonna get to use my broadsides. I'm gonna get to use my sky ray. So I control one objective for four points. I control two objectives for another four points for eight points total. And then I also control more than you. So that scores me 12 points for primary there. I'm at 10 command points, start of turn two. I gain one to go to 11 command points. My ethereal is gonna do an invocation of the elements uh, on a two. And I got it. 
to give me another command point. So I'm up to 12 okay. command points. The ethereal is gonna also do sense of stone on these fire warriors. And on two up. And it succeeds, so they now have a five up, ignore damage. And then the Contra Fire Blade is gonna do volley fire on these uh, these fire warriors as well. And then I'm going to start trying to kill you faster. Okay. Into the movement phase. At the beginning of the movement phase, I will declare some marker lights. The Sky Ray is gonna do the marker light action. These marker drones are gonna do the marker light action. Farsight Marksman is gonna do the marker light action. Yep. These drones are gonna do the marker light action. Yep. And my Sun Shark Bomber is gonna do the marker light action. Yep. And I would do it with a counter fire blade, but there's nothing for him to shoot, shoot at, so. I, I think you have more than enough marker lights. Nope, I do not have enough marker lights. I honestly don't. Okay, you believe what you want to believe. Hammerhead, moving over. So they're gonna advance three inches, and these Pathfinders are gonna come right in here and hold this objective. Shasso Kikasso is coming in here, and he's going to punch you to death. So it's gonna fly over your Victrix guard, drop a bomb on it, yep. and land right here. We're gonna move over here. At the end of my movement phase, I am not gonna bring in my Devilfish. You've still got some guys coming and I wanna be able to react to them. So my crisis suits are gonna go down right here. Nick's not putting the crisis suits where I thought he was gonna be. He's going for the other flank. Makes sense because there's not a lot of guns on that side, but now I'm really worried about my units on that side because if they go down in crisis suits, I'm not scoring points. I'm gonna use two command points on drop Threat acquisition on those battle suits, allowing me to reroll all my hit rolls. All your hit rolls. All my hit rolls. And then as I fly over those Victrix guard with that Sun Shark, it's gonna drop its pulse bomb. <laughs> if I get a four up with each dice, it's a mortal wound on those Victrix Ooh, guards. That hurts. One mortal wound on the Victrix guard. Beginning of the shooting phase. Mark lights from these two drones into those eradicators up there. Two, three ups. Got them both. Okay. Two marker lights on those eradicators. The marker light action completes and there are now two marker lights on the eradicators and two on the Vitrix. Now let's do the rest of the shooting and see if I can't kill some stuff. I'm gonna start with the hammerhead shooting right into you from okay. here because it's just so cool. So I'm gonna use one of those marker lights. Okay. Um, so I'm plus one to hit. Yep. I'm also minus one to hit. Yep. So it just evens out. So it evens out. Uh, I get one reroll of a hit roll for his, uh, his unit. Big giant gun! It hits on a five. Excellent. Strength a billion. It wounds. D6 plus six damage. So it does six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage. So this one goes away, and then the mortal wounds kill the uh, other spread, right? Oh, that was really satisfying, but I feel really guilty. You cannot win a game of Warhammer if you hold back the entire time. The Victor's Guard kept the characters alive first turn. The game plan doesn't change. I'm still moving my characters, whatever is left of them, up the board. At least the Victor's Guard ate the railgun, so Gilliman didn't have to. All these crisis suits are gonna fire into Tigurius. See if I can kill Tigurius. So the burst cannons are gonna fire into you, and then the air bursting fragmentation grenades. Okay, re-rolling hit rolls. Strength five. Woo, I get 11 uh, three ups. I only take two. So then the air bursting from ink fragmentation. Pew! <laughs> Six shots with each one. Hitting on fours, strength four. I've got a four up, I make it. So Shasso Kickasso, as he jumps over here to kill these guys with his close combat abilities, also turns around and says, with a plasma and a burst cannon. One shot, I hit. Wound at minus four on Tigurius with the plasma. Go for it. Three damage. Piranha's gonna try to kill your captain over there. He's got a fusion blaster, which misses. Drones. I'm okay. Sniper drones have a 52 inch range in Borkan. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's kill that captain with the sniper drones. I've always wanted to use the sniper drones. All right, they get one shot each. They're hitting on threes because of the uh, Firesight Marksman. Okay. I hit two of them, okay. one misses. So winning on threes? Oh, they both fail. <laughs> Moving on to the broadsides. Broadside is gonna go into the eradicators. Transhuman physiology on the eradicators. And... It wounds you, does D3 plus three damage, so I've done four damage and a mortal wound. Kills the one guy, the mortal wound passes over, so one of them has two wounds left. Three wounds at minus one. So 
So I make uh, two saves. So he's down to one wound. The Sky Rays gonna fire the Eradicators. They only hit you once. We're doing fours. Failed. I will command point reroll. Okay, going down to nine for a reroll. And I wounded. So six up. Nope, keep close. And then the smart missile system goes into that. Oh. And I wound you twice. Four. I make one. Just the plane left. Fire everything into the eradicators. So I'm gonna overcharge the guns. Yes, I'm gonna overcharge the guns. I could kill myself right here. Ion rifles, overcharging. I did two mortal wounds to myself, and I only hit you twice. No wounds. Woo. Two charges. I'm gonna charge you with my ouch puppies into the infiltrators. I've always wanted to do this. I, usually they die before I get a chance. Charge into you with Chasso. Chasso. Chasso Kickasso. Here we go into the Blade Guard veterans. Four attacks is Honor Gauntlet. Then he also gets to use his Flamer as a close combat weapon. Transhuman, the Blade Guard vets. I only hit you twice with the Onager Gauntlet. Wounding on fours. I only wounded you once. But you can reroll. I can reroll. I wound you twice. Okay. I make one command point reroll. I am running low on command points. And the ability to find three on a uh, D20. Oh, you got them both. Okay, all right, that's okay. I've still got the Flamer, the Thermo, thermo Numeter Quare Flamer thing. D6 plus two shots. We roll all misses, so still fours. Four times at minus two. Don't you get to reroll your wounds? I do get to reroll my wounds. Five times at minus two. Four ups. Kill the one with the wound remaining. Yeah. And then one's down to uh, one wound left. Crude hounds get three attacks each. <laughs> so 15 attacks. 15 attacks with the ouch puppies. I wounded you twice. Maybe I can kill one. No, I cannot kill one. I really expected more from those crude hounds. They didn't even do a single wound. Like our vets are gonna go and kill the- Crude or the crude. commander? No, the crude. The Gotta crude. Go the Interesting. It's all about objectives. It's all about my secondary objectives. I charged you this round. You so, did charge so me. You so get you, angels of death. So you helped me out there. So I get like, <laughs> extra dice each. And then I've still got Might of Heroes because it's until the next psychic phase. I don't get to cast it again because my psychic I will be very there. disappointed if you, if you do not manage to kill three crude. The sergeant into the crew, so they're dead. These guys are gonna go into the ouch puppies. He might kill all these guys. I doubt it. No AP though. I got one, so you killed one, two, three, four, five of them. <laughs> I think you won all these combats. I think I would have been better off not charging you in most of these cases here. Let's see if the puppies run. Oh, yeah, they're running. So one runs, and the other one. Also runs. They both ran away. Okay, that's surprising. <laughs> Tau have great board presence here and score another three for engage on all fronts. Nick has added one more retrieve knockman data tally, so he scores four points there, bringing him to a total of 24. This captain is going to go and grab this objective here. And Gilman is going to go right up the gut. Oh, this is kind of scary, actually. The commander is worth five points to Nick. So if Gilman can take him out, I'm keeping this close. I am bringing in some reinforcements because I need them. Unfortunately, my plan with Inceptors wasn't turn two. My plan with Inceptors was turn three, where I was hoping there'd be some more space and they could get into the back line. With the Eradicators gone, I need to bring in some guns onto my flank to reinforce it. So Inceptors are gonna come down and try to deal with the crisis suits. So I've done Knockwind here. I'm gonna do Knockwind now here. I will start with Gillen into the Prana. You'll be wounding at minus one strength. My strength six goes down to do strength five. I'm wounding on five. Three sixes to make. I make one of them. Three wounds remaining with that piranha. My infiltrators are gonna fire into this plane to see if I can maybe kill it. The cool thing about this weapon is that it auto wounds on sixes. Well, that's pretty good. So if I, let's see if I get any. So I need fives. Two at AP one. So down to two wounds. Five hell blasters, broadsides. And then plane. one will go into the plane, so I'm just gonna split fire. Nice. And then I'm going to burn one command point to do uh, Sons of Gilman. So I am re-rolling once. Uh, and then I'm supercharging all of this. So that does wound at AP4. Uh, goes right through. How much damage does it do? Two. Two, does it blow up? Oh, this would be a perfect place for it to blow up. 
<laughs> oh, it doesn't blow up. <laughs> Five shots from the Hell Blasters into the Frostrides. Hitting on threes. We roll ones. Good stratagem. Take the first two on the drones. Two more to take, because it was four total. So on sixes. So I got four wounds remaining on one of the broadsides. Eradicator will go into him. Try to finish him off. All right, it is a wound. On a six. Don't make it, please. That's the opposite of us. That's six. a one. All right. That's a oh. one. This is where you command point reroll. That's true. It was, good, it was a good save for the command point. Well done. Three. So he's down Three one. Three damage. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Down to one. The guy in the back is going to go into the front. The front two will go into the Christmas. Christmas. That makes sense. All right. So then the back guy, how many shots do it, does he get? Hitting on threes, oh, full rerolls from Gilliman. So this could kill me if I get any ones. Ooh, ooh. Goes right through. Two damage each. Uh, he's dead. Does he explode? He does not explode. I'm actually a little terrified of these Inceptors. They have plasma weapons and they're very high strength and they're very high AP. They're gonna get through any of my armor. And those crisis suits are probably in trouble. Five shots on the sergeant. And then the other guy. Oh, there's more. Oh no. Five plus three, so eight. I'm gonna take two on the drones. So now you have six more to save. Starting on the guy that has a four up invulnerable. Saves one, one goes through. He saves it again with his shield. Saves it again? He saves it again with his shield. Doesn't save it, so one crisis suit is now dead, and the last one on a six. That's mm, oh, tried. One crisis suit died, and one crisis suit is down to two wounds. All right, so Scorpius. 3d3 shots into the broadsides. Broadsides. Let's see if I, did I get max shots? I did get max shots. Nine. First one saves it. Second one doesn't save it. So he's dead. Remaining broadside saves it. I've got charges to declare. You want Gilman to come in here, don't you? Yeah. I do. <laughs> Command point reroll. And they okay. do. Oh good, I was gonna be very sad for you if that did not happen. The infiltrators are going to charge into the self suits. I will declare overwatch because they forgot to shoot in the shooting phase, so they'll make up for it now. <laughs> Three ups. Nope, uh -huh. they're okay. When you charge into these stealth suits, I'm gonna do repulsor impact field for one CP, okay. and uh, you get minus two to your charge range. And you're in anyway, so I guess that didn't matter. <laughs> Gilman is going to fight first, hitting on twos, rerolling ones. So that was a really bad roll. Score two wounds. However, oh. there's also D3 mortals coming your way. I only got one mortal. I'm just gonna take the two drones and I'll take one mortal onto, onto Chasso. You never wanna put yourself in a position where the dice win or lose you the game. While Gilliman didn't take down the commander, he's in the center. He's scoring me O's of moment. Not interrupting. Go ahead and try to kill those stealth suits. Minus one to hit me. Hitting on fours then. Five three ups. And none go through. Okay. I take them all. I'm gonna consolidate. Ongoing combat. Shasso Kikasso into your Blade Guard veteran so they don't try to kill me. And I will spend my last command point. On Transhuman? Transhuman. That's smart. With the Honor Gauntlet into the Blade Guard veterans. And I hit you all four times. Fours. I wounded you twice, but I reroll all wound rolls. I wounded you three times. I make one. It does flat three damage. Uh oh. Smash. Now we are contesting this objective. <laughs> so then my stealth suits try to hit you back. Yep. Hopefully I see on that objective. Let's we'll see what happens. I hit you none. Tax score is full odds a moment, and with two vehicles destroyed, he gets three points for bring it down. His second retrieve knock him data scores him another four secondary points. That brings us to the end of turn two, and the score for Tau is 24 to the Ultramarine 17. All right, Tac, turn three. Are you ready to be tabled? I was ready to be tabled turn two. I didn't think I was gonna make it this far. Although I don't know what's gonna happen here. I, I'm actually excited. You get to go first though, and uh, I only have three wounds remaining, so I don't know if I can survive that. I do get to shoot into combat. Maybe I could shoot you and kill you. Turn three is where Cayune starts to come into play. Cayune means that every time I hit on sixes, I get an extra hit. Um, and then next turn, I'll get it on fives, and next turn, I'll get it on fours. So it becomes really strong. And I also now get to fall back and still shoot at like an minus ultramarine. one, like an ultramarine. Beginning my turn, I also score, I control one, I control two. So I score eight points for that. Now I'm gonna do an invocation of the elements to get 
One more command point, which I do. So I get one more command point. In the movement phase, Nick could make a very critical error. I need him to make that error. Just saying. What is it? What's the error? All right, I'm gonna fall back with the Crisis Suit Commander so I can shoot you in the head. Is that the error? Then I'm going to fall back with the Stealth Suits. I'm already scoring Engage in all fronts. They've got good shots right here. I'm just gonna shoot into you. They're fine. Mistake two. Mistake two? Mistake two. Uh-oh. <laughs> so Tech does this sometimes. He has a really good tactical mind and he, he tends to see things that I don't. And right now he's telling me that I've made some sort of mistake and I am racking my brain trying to figure out what it is. Movement phase actions. Um, marker lights with the sky ray. Marker lights with the pathfinders. But I start that at the end of the movement phase. They're actually gonna move up so that they're on this side for engagement all fronts, just in case you manage to kill those somehow. I'm gonna bring my devil fishes in. I'm gonna bring the blue devil fish over here. I'm also gonna put the red devil fish over here too. Shooting phase, do the marker lights first. So these pathfinders are gonna do one CP stratagem recon sweep. So they're gonna get to fire their marker lights on a two rather than a three and then do a normal move. Three into the captain. On twos, I hit two of them. So he's got two marker lights. Three on the the Inceptors. Three on the Inceptors. And then three on Gilman. Three on Gilman. Guy Ray shoots its marker lights. The Infiltrator's right in front of it. I'm gonna shoot a Railgun into Gilman. A Railgun, which the gates is invulnerable save, and I can kill him with one Railgun shot to the head. <laughs> railgun shots. It hits. I need a two to wound. It's a six. So I wounded, as well as eight regular damage, plus three mortal wounds. Aha! He's annihilated. So he can get back up, can't he? And I can't do anything about that right now. Is there any strategies you can do to charge? No. So first mistake. Oh, I see it now. This is mistake number one. Nick didn't fall back far enough with his commander. If Gilliman gets back up from taking a real gun to the face, he can heroically intervene. Mistake number two. Nick needs to think about contingencies. If Gilman got back up and his commander is in trouble, he should have had a counter charge unit. But he has no one that can counter charge Gilman, and Gilman's going to be at a hero plane interview. I made mistakes. Let's see if I live from it. But that's why I said it's a 50 50 whether or not that, those were mistakes. Yeah, that's true. He might not stand up. Commander is going to fire everything into these inceptors. He's going to use one of those marker lights, so he hits on twos now instead of three. His flamer, one shot plus two. He... he does not wound, because it's only strength four. Don't you reroll? So I reroll all failed wound rolls, though, <laughs> and I wound you once at minus two. Which I do not make. It's two damage. Okay, down to one left. Plasma. And it does three damage. Okay, so it kills the guy. And the burst cannon. I uh, still fell two. One of them has one wound remaining. Crisis suits over there, into that guy, using one of those marker lights as well. Kills one guy? Kills one of them. All those pathfinders will shoot into you. On fours! Hey, zero. Oh, okay, so he's got one more remaining. Devilfish A is firing into the infiltrators. Eight shots. I have a four up. Go on both. Next Devilfish, same exact thing. The uh, Helix Gauntlet is used to remove one, but then the one with one wound dies. Sniper guys are gonna all fire into that Inceptors and try to kill them. Three sniper shots. Yep. Causes a mortal wound on a six. Broadside into the Eradicator. The main gun hits you once. Wounds you once at minus four. He's gone. Sky Ray's gonna fire everything into that those infiltrators. He's gone. That is rough. Tack has very little now to work with. End of phase, I get to make a roll oh, to see if Gilliman gets back up. Does Gilliman get back up? This is big. What's gonna happen here is if, if Gilliman gets back up, and if Gilliman kills the commander, that loses Nick five points. It scores me two points for Oza Moment because I stay in the center. And it scores me that objective. Gilliman has to get back up. On a four up, here we go. Oh, he gets back up. Oh, I needed that. I really, really, really needed that. He gets back up with D6 wounds. So he gets out with four wounds. And this is where that big mistake comes into play because I cannot charge you because I fell back. So he's stuck there. Chasso versus Gilman, round two. Now, it's not a charge. So there are no charges that go first. I'm the defender this turn. Yeah, so you get so to I fight first. So I actually first. get to fight first. 
on twos, but he does get to re-roll <laughs> hitting for himself. <laughs> At least. See what happens. Uh, there are six saves to make, just in case. <laughs> oh, he's totally dead. Oh, yeah. That also scores me that objective in the middle. So that does a number of things. You hold two, so you're gonna get eight points in your turn. In addition, you've killed one of my two the last, denying me five points. And uh, you've almost killed this broadside and almost killed that crisis suit squad. So if you manage to do that, you could actually eco to decent score here. Nick continues to score engaged in all fronts, but that is it this turn. Tax big play with Gilliman gets him eight for primary with more points in reach. In my command phase, I get a precious single command points. Got two big choices. One, Gilman moves forward, charges into that rail gun, hopefully kills the hammerhead. That's minus five points for Nick. And maybe, maybe I'm able to then stay in the game. However, my dice haven't been hot this game. If Gilman stays in the center, that is four points to me. That's two points for Oza Moment. That's two points for staying on the center objective. Guaranteed four points possible negative five to Nick. This one's a tough one. Tack decides to try and get four points and keeps G-Man in the center while also bringing his infiltrators in, but not in the greatest spot on him. Gilliman will fire his three shots, hitting on twos. My strength wep six weapon goes down to strength five. <laughs> because of Borkan! I will need none. But the Hellblasters are supercharging into the broadside? Into the broadside. Got it. Yeah. Tack burns his last command point on Sons of Gulliman because he needs to take down that broadside. On sixes. I got none. That's six damage. Six damage, he's got two wounds remaining. And these infiltrators are gonna fire into the uh, Pathfinders. A six up. Fail both. The Scorpius will fire into the broadside. Ooh, come on. Oh, oh here we two. go. On fours. Save one, one goes through. How much damage do you do? Uh, does two. Does two, so you kill him. I'm gonna see PB roll that though. Yeah. Here we go. Nope, it failed. You got him. Ooh. Kaboom. These guys are gonna charge into Pathfinders. I am going to do photon grenades for one command point. You're minus two to your charge, and you're minus one to hit. Add insult to injury, I'm also gonna overwatch for one CP. All right, hitting on sixes. And I wounded in none. That is a 10. Oh. I actually make it. Hellblast is charging itself. So Don't get double ones. I got five. So three from the charge, two from the rest of the guys, and then angels of death. 11. Uh, eight guys remaining. They be dead. <laughs> yep, you slaughtered the whole squad. Three inches towards the closest enemy, which means I have taken this object objective away from you. You've actually brought me down to only holding one objective. The Hellblasters and the Stell suits do nothing to each other in close combat. Well, that checks out. Four points for Olds and two more primary for holding the center. That takes our end of turn three score to 35 for the Tau and 31 for the Ultramarines. Nice! Tack brought the score close, but with the units he has left, it may be curtains for him next turn. Let's see what happens. Nick has kept a four primary as Tack has taken all the other objectives. He also gains two command points, bringing him to seven. In the movement phase, Nick spends two command points so his breachers can deploy out of the Devilfish after it moves. The red breachers are gonna get out here and they are actually gonna perform Nachmandata. And then this Devilfish is gonna advance five inches. That'll give me enough to take this objective so that I can move this bad boy over. It's gonna go up here. They're gonna come out and they're gonna blast you. First, let's do the fun one. Railgun? Railgun into Gilly. All right, so you're plus one to hit. Come on! 
It's a three, it's a hit. I need you to roll one. Ah! Oh, gotcha. My only chance was if Nick failed to uh, hurt me with the real gun, but he didn't. That gun is rough. Seven normal damage. Plus the mortals. Plus three mortal wounds. Okay. So that's 10 damage. With that, the Tau annihilate the rest of the Ultramarines. That's a sad day. Save a few on the back objective and the players, they call it there. It was an uphill battle for the Ultramarines and they stayed on the board for as long as they could. But this is an overwhelming victory for the Tau. Final score after paint is Tau 83 to the Ultramarines 45. I'm gonna break you, break you down. We want to thank you for watching this game with us. This episode is brought to you by our Patreon community. These videos are a lot of work. With the editing being 55 plus hours alone, we cannot do this without the steadfast support of our Patreon community. So thank you so much. We literally could not do this without you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of 40K and 40 Minutes. And until I see you next time in the far flung future of this grim dark universe, play on. You learn with every loss. You learn more from your losses than you with your wins. If the dice had been a little kinder to him, could have gone differently. But this is a game of Warhammer where the dice do tell stories. And this story is of a Tau victory over the over the evil Imperium invaders. Now that I've played the Tau and, you know, lost, it just means retooling. It just means figuring out ways. There's, there's always something, and I hope this game demonstrated that, where there's always something that you can do in a game. And while I was beaten this time, I want to try again.